4D birthday cake with a removable slice acrylic nailer tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video I'm going to show you a really cute little 4D birthday cake with a slice that's removed and on the birthday cake I have two years written on it and you could write whatever you wanted on it but it's this one's she turned two about three weeks ago so I have a couple videos from her very small garage birthday party and just, you know, a couple little pictures of her at the end of this. So if you want to see a little bit of her two-year-old birthday party as much as it was, definitely look at that, and I will see you next time. Bye! I'm going to begin by cutting a triangle out of the tip of the nail. So this is a nail tip, and you really have to use a plastic nail tip for this design. Then we're going to take and we're going to glue a magnet to the main part of the nail. And then after that magnet is glued, hold that little triangle that you cut out of the nail tip up to it. So just, or you can, you can either eyeball it or you can mark it, but then glue a magnet to that little triangle piece as well. So now we're going to be applying an overlay to our cake. Um, so you're going to choose whatever cake color you want. Mine kind of reminds me of like a spiced cake, but you can cre keep it pretty um, pale and do like a vanilla cake or make it brown and make it be a chocolate cake. You know, sky's the limit here. You can be your own little nail baker and do that to the little triangle as well. And then after you have that done and then you're going to want to take and cut four pieces of wire for the regular part of the cake and one piece of wire for the little slice and this is going to be for the candles and you can do however many candles you want obviously I probably should have done two for the two years old but five is a very attractive number just visually on something like this so if unless you really want to be a specific number I would just go with five because it looks appropriate with the one in the slice and the four in the other part of the nail and after you have that done, you can go ahead and frost the cake. And when you're frosting the cake, I went with white for a classic, classic vanilla frosting. And plus it gave a nice contrast against my cake color, but it's up to you. And while you're doing this, you're really securing those pieces of wire into place. When I pressed them into the cake, it was still not quite 100% cured. So it was a little bit tacky and it let me press it into it. If that brown acrylic that you use or whatever color in the beginning was completely hardened, you wouldn't have been able to do that. So just time it out right so that they will stay in. And as you can see, I'm still having to fight with them a little bit with my white acrylic. So as you're up um, frosting the cake, just keep checking on your candles to make sure that they are staying where they're supposed to be. And good luck a little bit. <laughs> my white acrylic kept wanting to push the one candle over. So it works out in the end. You just have to be a little bit uh, cautious with it. So frost both the full part of the cake and then the little slice as well. And as you're doing this, try to just visualize and keep the thickness of the layers on the nail and the slice as close to the same as you can. Um, that way when you go to line it up, it'll still look right when you put the piece into the cake. As you can see, the candle on my slice just fell right out. So I'm going to pick that up and put it back in and then hold it for a second so that it'll stay hopefully yeah they just stay in the end it just takes a little bit of a little bit of time and then after you have that this is the part that I think is actually really fun we're going to go and add a border around our cake that is going to be for the piping the piped frosting around the borders so just place a strip of whatever your frosting color is around the outside perimeter of the nail and then let it sit up for a second and then drag the tip of your brush through it to create that piped pattern I absolutely love piping, like actually on cakes. I think that's a really fun thing to do. I think it's a little bit dated in a lot of cake designs recently, but it does create that iconic birthday cake look. So for a nail like this, it's definitely something that just makes you instantly think, ooh, a cake. So there we go. So there, just keep adding that little pattern going around the entire perimeter of the nail. You do want to do this little section by little section so that the acrylic doesn't set up before you can reach it and or get to it and create that little pattern in it. And as you're working on it, it may seem like it'd be easier just to try to do the whole thing, but really just take your time. If you have a type of gel like um, uh, Wildflowers Lace Paste is the one that comes to mind, but a really thick sculpture 4D type gel that you could use in place of the acrylic. It might be easier because you could say roll out a long snake of that gel product and then place it around the perimeter of the nail and you could just really quickly go, you know, line, 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 line and have that piped pattern in there in like no time flat. But I'm an acrylic girl through and through, so whenever I can use acrylic, I do, usually. So I'm just going to keep working with my acrylic, even though there would probably be easier options out there. And then you're also going to need to add that little pattern to the slice of cake as well, so that it all matches up in the end when you put the 
cake together. And then you're going to need to sculpt little flames for your candles out of yellow acrylic on a nail form backing. So however many candles you have, that's how many flames you have, unless you want to be funny and have some of the candles not lit. But if you want to keep it just like with a classic feel good birthday cake look, then you're definitely going to need a flame for all your candles. So just after you set those beads of acrylic down, then you can wait a couple seconds and then begin to push them in to a teardrop shape, just like so. And then after those are set up, then you're going to take some nail glue and you're going to glue each flame to the end of a candle. And one thing, if you wanted your candles to be a color instead of just being the wire color, you could take some gel polish and paint them. If you have a one-step gel polish, that makes it really easy because then you don't have to worry about applying some top coat over that. But if you don't, you could definitely color them with any kind of gel polish you have. Even regular polish if you want to, but then you'd really have to make sure it dried before you started adding any other details to it. But if you wanted to tint your candles, that would be an option for you. Apply the last little flame to the final candle. And then after you have all of those candles in place, the last one for me got glued to my tweezers, which is never fun, but <laughs> there we go. Now it'll stay. I always get nail glue problems, but then you're going to want to take and fill in the candle shape with more yellow acrylic. So right now the candles are very, very flat and they don't have that kind of 360 roundness to them. So just hold the nail at an angle and then apply some yellow acrylic to the back. This is also going to cap where the wire is glued to the candle flame so that it can't see that anymore and it holds it all together much better. Just a little bit to like that. And then I'm going to dilute some gray paint and I'm going to be adding some shading on my frosting. Now this is up to you. If you wanted it to keep that pristine white, you wouldn't have had to do that. I just think it gives the whole design a bit more dimension. And then you're going to shade the base of each flame with some orange. So just add a little bit of orange around right where the wire touches the flame. And then take a little bit of a bright yellow and just paint the very tips of the flames. This will give the flames so much more movement and so much more realism, just giving them a couple different colors on them. And then with bright, bright white paint, you're going to go through and highlight your frosting. So the white acrylic that I used when I sculpted everything isn't quite as like snow vivid white as my paint is. So after you've done that, then you can go through and you can take a bunch of little colors and add some dashes all around the frosting for sprinkles. If you don't want to paint the sprinkles on it, you could also use some little bits of a fine glitter to do this as well. That's another option. I like the idea of painting them because then you have really nice control over where they're all going and you won't accidentally get too many. And now is the other fun part for this is you get to write your little message on the, on the cake. So you can either write something uh, just classic and non-specific like happy birthday or if you're doing this for somebody say you're going to a birthday party you could write happy birthday um, mom or Karen or Susan or Joe or whoever it is that you're going to or you can write the years on it and depending on the person they may either be really flattered that you wrote the years on it or horrified <laughs> so just kind of gauge what you're doing but for Miss Melody I did write two years on her birthday cake I can't believe she's two years guys I just remember telling everybody that I was going to have a baby and now here we are two years later. Crazy. But I hope you guys like this design as much as I do and Melody does. And here is a couple little clips of her birthday. In uh, the middle of electric vehicle land. Melody's first electric vehicle. Woohoo! Keep going. Let's <laughs> <laughs> do it this way. <coughs> the, other, the other way. Blow <laughs> 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 on the candle. Blow on the candle. One more time. One more time. Now you gotta get the other one. Someone's gonna get it. Ready? And here's a picture of Melody and her great grandmother and it was actually a dual birthday party for them. We wanted to combine as many events with the people that were there as possible so that we didn't have to keep contaminating each other. And here is her cake. I absolutely had so much fun at this party getting to see Miss Melody and my grandmother together celebrating was such a joy for me. I hope you guys like this design as much as I do and as much as I know Melody does. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well.